So you'll notice that it has a jack there or an asterisk. So that indicates that it's a live paint group. That's how it's been converted into a live paint group. So what I want to do now is add the color to this. And there are a couple of tools that we looked at to add color. If I click on this icon that looks like two circles over one another with an arrow, this is called the Shape Builder. Underneath the Shape Builder, let me tear this set away. Underneath the Shape Builder, I have this bucket, and I also have a Live Paint Selection tool. If I click on the bucket, it allows me to hover over the spaces. You'll notice that an active space or an active area gets this highlight around it. Do you see that? So if it doesn't create a highlight, that means that it's not being understood as a live paint area. So every time I hover over one of these spaces, I can see that it's highlighting it. Now, I can select a color out of my swatch panel, or I can sample a color directly from my blueprint. And that's what I want to do. I want to select a color from my reference image or my blueprint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my, my Alt key down, or my Option key. So you'll notice that when I click on my Option key, it toggles from the bucket to the eyedropper. It toggles from the bucket to the eyedropper. So I'm holding the Alt or Option key down. So now I'm going to click on this brown. And you'll notice it didn't load it correctly. This is a little glitch in the software. So I'm going to do that again. So now it selects the brown. You see that? OK, so I'm going to drop the brown in this spot. I'm going to go to the mouth, sample the mouth, let go, drop the color. Sample this tan, let go, drop that color. Sample the spot, drop that color. So the object here is for me to basically to go to all of the little areas and drop the, the correct color in all of those fields. Let me do the tail real quickly. So what I'm doing is I'm sampling the colors and assigning them to the appropriate spot. Whoops, wrong one. All right, so I'm going to turn off my blueprint. We'll do, we'll do a compare and contrast. Let's see where I'm at. So you'll notice I'm toggling the blueprint on and off. I missed the spot. I missed the spot right there, right, on his forehead. Right, so turn the reference image on. That's what it looks like if it was done correctly. And there I can see that I missed that spot. All right, so I'm going to go back to the reference image, sample that color again with the live paint bucket, and fill that spot. So the object is to fill all of the fields. Now, one of the things that is difficult within the live paint group is to manage the strokes around the objects. So I like to use live paint to just apply the fill colors. But all of the strokes, I'm going to turn them off. I'm going to turn them off. So how do I turn off the stroke? I either set the stroke. I select the entire live paint group, so check it out. Let me make sure you guys see that. I'm going to select the live paint group, and I'm going to set the stroke to zero. Oops. Stroke to zero. And it's not changing it. So I set the stroke to zero. So I, it turns off all the trapping that is available from the live paint group. Another way that I can shut off the strokes is to do this. Let me turn off the reference image. I can select the live paint group and just say, hey, no stroke, no stroke. 
So I just turned it off. So this is what I want it to look like. There's no stroke or strokes on this object, but obviously it looks incomplete. It's not finished. All right, so what I want to do, the last thing that I want to do is I'm going to lock my live paint group once I'm done filling it. And I'm going to go to my outline layer. And I'm going to make another copy of this duplicate outline. And I'm going to drag this on top of the live paint group. So this new layer with the copied lines, I'm going to change the color of the stroke from red to black. And now I can manage the way that the trap will look. OK, so I want to analyze how the trap is handled on Rigby. So for example, look at this edge right here. Look at this edge. You'll notice that it has a round cap on it. See how it has a round cap? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these strokes. And I'm going to activate my stroke panel. We saw this earlier in the quarter. These are all things we've discussed already. And I'm going to add round caps to it. To it. So there's a round cap. Okay, and then I'm also going to, you know, make sure that I get rid of any, any lines that I no longer need. So in the original Rigby, there isn't a line right here. I just use this line to create that separation. So I'm going to delete it. There isn't a line there either. So I'm going to try to try to get all of my strokes to match correctly. Okay, so part of the object is to take all of the line work, duplicate it, stack it on top, and then customize those lines to match. All right, so let's go to the homework again. So you'll notice the homework assignment says, Use the features covered in class. That's step four. Use the features covered in class to define your color in your fill areas. Option key to toggle the eyedropper. Set your strokes to zero in your live paint group. Once you're done, duplicate your original paths layer a second time. Use this new layer to define the details and strokes around your character. This layer should stack on top of your live paint information. So that is how I constructed my document. You'll notice that there is a outline layer. I use that to make a copy to construct my live paint layer. I filled in all the colors with the live paint tool. And then I made a copy again of this one. And I made a trap layer out of it. I'm going to call it that, a trap layer. And that is going to create the illusion of the trap around my cartoon character. So I made copies of my outline layer twice to accomplish this. Does that make sense, everybody?